Hello, my name is Dr. Jasmine Gaddy, and I'm a rheumatologist working for the Indian Health Service in Oklahoma City. The Indian Health Service, or IHS, is the principal federal health care provider and health advocate for American Indians and Alaska Natives, and its goal is to raise their health status to the highest possible level. We provide services to approximately 2.6 million American Indians and Alaska Natives through a network of over 605 hospitals, clinics, and health stations on or near Indian reservations. Some of the facilities are located in large metropolitan areas like Phoenix, Anchorage, Albuquerque, and Oklahoma City, as well as isolated hardship and remote locations like Barrow, Alaska, north of the Arctic Circle. As with any organization delivering health care in rural, remote locations, we face a number of challenges. Many of our communities across Indian country have long experienced lower health status when compared with other Americans. Lower life expectancy and disproportionate disease burden exists, perhaps because of inadequate education, disproportionate poverty, and cultural differences. These are broad quality of life issues rooted in economic adversity and poor social conditions. Specialty care like rheumatology present additional challenges and access limitations. I represent only one of a very limited number of rheumatology specialists providing rheumatology services within IHS in a field which is already experiencing a workforce shortage. IHS is working to address many of our challenges through the utilization of telehealth. As we expand telespecialty services, we will improve access to care, reduce patient wait times, and bring additional resources to our healthcare providers and ultimately care to our patients. Systemic lupus falls into the category of rheumatology and is a chronic long-term autoimmune disease, which can vary from mild to serious in severity. Factors such as gender, race, ethnicity, and age impact the chances of developing lupus. Lupus can cause inflammation affecting multiple organs, such as the skin and joints, or more serious involvement, such as kidneys and lungs. Oftentimes, patients can have nonspecific symptoms, for example, fatigue and fever. And because of this, lupus can be confused with other conditions, such as viral illnesses. It is estimated that as many as 1.5 million Americans have lupus. The prevalence of lupus, in other words, how many people are living with the disease, and the incidence of lupus, in other words, the number of new cases within a specific time period among U.S. American Indians and Alaskan Natives are some of the highest for any group, including rates previously reported for African Americans. It is important to recognize lupus early, as a person with lupus has a much better chance for a full life with a manageable chronic disease when treatment is initiated. Here in Oklahoma, we have observed atypical clinical presentations making recognition a little more difficult. This underscores the importance of bringing awareness within our American and Alaskan Native populations. In an effort to increase awareness and access to care, IHS is providing training, consultation, and resources to clinicians treating patients with lupus. Collaboration with, within IHS and with the community allows for educational series targeting those on our front lines, the local primary care providers, which has expanded lupus evaluation and treatment. IHS remains committed to improving healthcare service delivery to strengthen the health status of American Indian and Alaska Native people. For more information on lupus, please visit www.lupus.org and thank you for your time and attention.